Okay, this is a tutorial on the low method. It's called the low method because it's invented by Lou Yunhao. Um, the current world record holder for single and average, and because this um differs from regular no flip, which would just be like like um so, so memorizing how to solve the cross on one side, flipping over and then like do, doing the cross from behind and then doing the cross front and proceeding with the solve as normal. This uses simu simultaneous turning, which is when you have one one of the pins up, and like you you turn like the the dials at the same time. Um, because of that added element, I decided to just give it a different name from regular no flip. So that's the terminology we'll be using from now on. So I'm going to be doing a quick a quick notation rundown, and I'm going to be using my own version of WCA. So um, don't skip this part. Um, but if you already know concise notation, then you can skip to here. And if you already know concise and um, the standard WCA notation, then you can skip to um, here. Yeah. Okay. So there are two notations as I mentioned before: concise and WCA. I won't be going over scrambling conventions, so um, you can watch a video that I'll link in the description or like in the, the eye thing at the corner. For concise, you're going to have an ordered pair of numbers. The first number refers to the amount that you turn the, the wheel that corresponds to a pin that is up. For the second number, it refers to how much you turn a wheel that corresponds to a pin that is down. Um, from now on, I'm going to be saying that, um, it, that when a wheel corresponds to a, a pin that is up, I'll, I'll be calling it an up wheel. And if it corresponds to a pin that is down, I'll be calling it a down wheel. Another way to represent an ordered pair it, that you might see in some tutorials elsewhere, uh, namely um, Johan Lowe's uh, uh, tutorial video himself. Um, so basically, it's like you, you specify how much the D is and the U is. So you would see something like D equals like negative m minus 3, uh, comma U equals like, 4 plus or something like that. And it, it means the same thing. Like the orders might be reversed, but yeah. For the pin notation in concise, um, you're going to have a string of four letters, um, and and the little letters would either be a lowercase d, which represents a, a pin that is down, or an uppercase u, which represents a pin that is up. So the order for the string is this. So the the top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. So um, it's like sort of like a zigzag motion, um, and, and I, I guess it's sort of like that because okay, so if you no notate the pins like. Um, using a 2x2 two two matrix, um, you're going to see that um, if, if you move the, um, the the two letters that are on the bottom, like and you, app, you, you append it to the, um, the first two letters, then you, you just get that string. So um, the, the, that, that's why it works like that. Okay, so for example, um, if you have UD, UD, then it would look like this, because this is up, down, up, down. Okay, so that's for concise. For, for WCA notation, um, the the pins and wheels are uh, denoted with UL, UR, DL, and DR. The non-numerical part of the turn describes the pins that are up. So, for example, UL5 plus would mean, so you have the, the UL pin up, and you turn it by 5 in the clockwise direction. And minus just means in uh, counterclockwise direction. So if you have a single letter, like U, R, D, or L, then you have to, that refers to U, so like you have to have two pins up. So th okay, so th this would be U, R, D, and L because um, it corresponds to um, like up, down, le uh, left, right. Um, so for example, if you have um, R three minus, then that would be these two pins up, and you turn the, the pins the, the the up wheels um, by three minus, oh like like that. Also, sometimes see um, all in the in scrambles. So all just means you have all the pins up, and then you just turn it by the the number specified. Um, there are also three types of rotations. So um, there's a di diagonal rotation. There's like two of them. Um, you have uh, x2, and you have y2, which is like that. As for the pin state, ul, ur, dl, and dr are present if they are up, and they're not present if they're d they're down. So if you have um, UR, DR, then that means these two will be the ones that are up. So here's my spin on the notation. So the problem with WCA is that um, you can't specify moves like this. Like if you have like, like these pins, or if you have like even three pins, you can't like specify that kind of move. Also you can't specify um, this kind of move, because it, um, it, it only deals with moves that are done on up wheels. So, um, concise sort of fixes that. Like you, you can specify the pin state, um, 
like beforehand with like the UD string. And you can also specify it if you're trying a, a down pin, a down wheel or an up wheel. But the problem with that is you can't, um, if there's like more than one option for like an up wheel, for example, um, here there's the three other pins are up. So um, if it's like U, U equals three plus, then it doesn't specify which one you do. So, but if you want that level of specificity, um, like for ergonomic sake or something, then um, you can't really do that with, with that. So here, here's what I propose. Um, so you're going to use WCA for the pins and use like basically WCA for the wheels as well. But since like like each like actual like rotation only deals with one um, wheel at a time, we're just going to use the like the four the four two letter. Um, Notation so like U U L U R D L D R that th that's for the wheel and we also um, change its capitalization depending on if it's an if it's an up wheel or if it's on a down wheel so for example if if we have two pins up here um, U L U R and we want to turn the U R pin by um, four plus then the, it'll be it'll, it'll just be the same thing it'll, it'll just be U R four plus Oops, yeah like that. Um, however, if, if we're trying the DR pin um, by 4+, plus, then it's going to be lowercase dr and then 4+. Plus. Okay. Yeah, um, so th that's what we're going to use in this tutorial. And hopefully um, it's like adopted if more people will end up using this method. Okay, so for this tutorial, I'm going to be using um, a generated scramble that you can follow along with. Okay, so this is how the scramble should look like. That side and like that. Okay, so um, for this method, you're going to have to, have to choose a side to memorize from. Um, if there are no lucky cases, then it, it doesn't really matter what side you can memorize on. But um, this method takes into account two lucky cases. So um, the first lucky case is if um, it, it is if the center uh, clock is matched with um, one of the edge clocks. So if that's the case, then you can rotate it so that um, so, so that the the solved edge clock is on top. And the second case is if two adjacent edge clocks are solved. And in that case, um, you want to rotate it so that one, one of them is on top and one, one of them is on um, the right side. Um, so I think, um, let's just use this side to memorize on. So for this method, you're going to have to memorize five numbers. For the first number, you want to imagine matching the center clock with the left edge clock. Um, and you see what that does to the, the bottom edge clock. So this would have to go 4 minus, and that would make this go to 12 o'clock. Next, you look at the, the center edge clock and, and try to match it with... Um, imagine matching it to the right edge clock and see what that does to the, the new location of the bottom edge clock. So here, this would have to go 2 plus, and f from the, the previous location, it was at 12 o'clock. But then um, after 2 plus, it would be at 2 o'clock. So the number that we memorize is going to be the final position of the bottom edge clock with respect to the absolute position, the, the absolute 12 o'clock. So if we were memorizing from this rotation, then we would still look at the um, the, the 12 o'clock position rather than like the relative 12 o'clock position. So the first number is 2. Um, for the second number, we imagine matching the left edge clock with the center clock. And for this, it would be 4, um, 4 plus. Um, so that would be our second number. For the, th the third number, we imagine matching the b the bottom edge clock with the center clock. So here it would be six. Um, for the fourth number, we imagine matching the right edge clock with the top edge clock. For that, it would be four plus. And finally, for the last number, we imagine matching the top edge clock with the center clock. So for this, it would be six. Okay, so after doing a Y2, um, we want to have the UR pin up. Um, here in this scramble, it's already up for us, so we don't have to do anything. So we want to move the UL wheel by the first number, and at the same time, we move the UR wheel um, in order to match the center clock with the, the bottom edge clock. But in this demonstration, I'll be doing um, each of them separately to, to, to make it easier to understand. So here, we do two, and for this, we do that so that these two match. Next, we move the DR pin up, um, so we want the, the, the right two um, pins to be up. So we want to move the UL wheel by the second number, and we want to match these two clocks with the left edge clock, and we do that by moving the UR wheel. So we, this would be four, and this would be um, two. Next, we push this pin down, and we push um, the DL pin up so that the, the bottom two pins are up. We, we want to move the UL wheel by the third number, and we want to match these uh, these three clocks with the, the, the top edge clock. So this would be six, 
that's a, th a third number, and we move the DR wheel um, uh, like that. Um, next, we push the, the DR pin down and we push the UL pin up, and we want to um, move the UR wheel by the fourth number, and we want to match these four clocks, these four clocks with the um, the the right edge clock um, by moving the UL wheel. So this would be four, and um, this we move like we move like that. Next, we push the UR pin up, and so we have three um, these three pins up and this pin down. We we want to move the DR wheel by the fifth number, and we want to um, match the the cross clocks with this corner by moving the UL wheel. So this would be uh, four. Six, I think, yeah. And move this like that. Um, so from here, we can um, solve the corners however we want, taking advantage of like um, solved corners and stuff. I typically go in a counterclockwise order. So um, after solving this clock, I would typically go to here, but this one's already solved. So I would push this pin up, push this pin down, and solve that like that. Um, solve this one, and then um, do all, all of them up, and then s solve them to 12 o'clock. And that solves the back. Okay, so next I'm going to be going over three uh, three lucky cases. So this is the scramble. So just follow along. Okay, so this is how it should look like. Okay, so here we see that there's um, a lucky case. There's a center cross, a center clock solved uh, solved with respect to um, a right edge clock. So. We choose this side to memorize on, and we rotate it like this. Okay, so for the first number, um, so this has to go uh, minus one, um, and minus one on here makes this go here. So then for this, um, this has to go minus three, and this will end up here. So then the absolute position position is five. This, um, if we imagine matching this with this, then this would be one plus. Um, matching this with this would be um, 3 minus, matching this with this is 3 plus, and matching this with this is 0. So the five numbers are 5, 1, 3 minus, 3, 0. So we do a y2. Um, we do, we push these pins down, and um, so one tip that I have for um, doing the simultaneous moves is you, you want to imagine um, for, for the down wheel that you turn, um, like the the wheel that you turn using like a, the number you memorized, um, you have to imagine wh where the final position of it, of it will be, and you have that in mind while you turn, so you don't get mixed up. Okay, so we have this pin up, and this would go five uh, in the clockwise direction, so it would end up here. Like that, okay, so next, oh, like that, okay, so um, the next number is one, and for that it's like, um, you don't really, like, it's just like next to it, so you don't really have to think about it too much. So like that. Next, um, the number is uh, three minus. So this would end up here, and at the same, same time you want to solve that with this. So like that. Okay. Um, yeah, it does take a, a bit of getting used to because like um, you're gonna overshoot a lot. Um, okay. So next, you want to move this by um, positive three. So then this would end up uh, here. And uh, you want to solve that. You want to solve that with that. So uh, like that. Okay. Um, next. Okay. So for the last one, it, since it's zero, you don't have to do anything um, for, for, with this wheel. And for this, you just want to solve it like that. Okay. Um, so then you just solve the rest of the corners. Yeah. So then this is solved like that, and the back is solved as well. Okay, this last case is going to be a very lucky case. Um, this is a scramble. So here, um, this is how the scramble should look like. Okay, so um, here we see that on both sides, um, the center clock solved with like one of the edge clocks for both sides. So for this, um, that, that means we can like choose any side we, we want to. Um, yeah, let's choose this side. Um, here, we're going to have um, one, one of the top clocks on, on top. So, for the first number, um, this the, these are solved, so um, for, for, for this part of, of the imagina uh, imagination, we don't have to do anything. Um, 
Well, for, for this to end up there, um, it has to go plus four. So then this would end up there, and that's zero. Okay. This is all of that. So the second number is also zero. Um, for the third number, this has to go plus three. Oops. This has to go plus three to match there. This has to go um, minus four to end up there. And this has, and, and these are solid, so it's just zero. So, so the numbers are zero, zero, three, four minus zero. Okay, we do a y2. And um, we have this. Yeah, okay, so this, this pin is already up. Okay, so um, we, we don't have to do anything for this. So we just match this with that. Okay, and we also don't have to do anything because it's zero again. So we match um, these three with this one. Okay, so we press these and do that. Okay, so for this next one, um, it's going to be three. So then this would end up here, and then we match these with that. So then, like that. Okay, so next we do that. Um, the next number is going to be four minus. So this will end up uh, there on the, the three o'clock. And um, for this, it's matched with that, so we don't have to do anything for this uh, wheel. So that. Okay. And for the last one, um, it's also zero, so we don't have to do anything for this. Um, but w we can match um, these cross clocks with that. that. Okay, and then we solve the rest of the corners. That, okay, and if we see that the, the back is also solved. Okay, so a few notes about this method. The, the, si the simultaneous moves are definitely like the hardest to get used to, but I think like um, like well, once you do enough solves, like over a thousand or something, like it'll actually come quite naturally. Um, also, this the maximum amount of moves that this method would take is nine moves compared to fourteen for like um, the tr the traditional um, Pachman method. Um, so, not only is like the, the like the worst case scenario better, but on average it's a lot better. So, f for the, the 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 four cases that we went through today. Um, that like the tutorial case and the three lucky cases, on average, the um, the low method took eight point seventy five moves, and for the um, so, so that that's if you count like the, the simultaneous moves as like like one move, um, and and if you don't, then it's um, twelve point twenty five moves on average, um, and for the the um, normal method, if you don't use any like fancy like corner skipping um, like techniques, like if you just do like based on like the, the lucky cases, it's 11.75 moves on average. So so that means um, on average, for, for these um, scrambles at least, this um, th this method is uh, three moves more efficient. Obviously, this isn't a, a, rigor a rigorous case study because I, I haven't done it on like like completely ran randomly generated scrambles and I, I like the sample size is obviously not as large. But, but I think this method has a lot of potential, especially because it utilizes not only like doing the no flip so that saves moves on like flipping i mean like i know like professionals um like really fast clock solvers they can like flip like really quickly anyway but like still it's it saves like some non-zero uh non-zero amount of of time and also because of the simultaneous move turning so sure i think the the, the simultaneous move turning might be slower than like an actual single move but even if it is slower it just has to be um faster than um to doing two of those moves, and I personally think it can be like quite easily. Um, it, it probably won't ever get to like the exact speed of like a normal move. Maybe it'll be like like 1.3 times slower at or like 1.2 times slower at, at at best. But that still saves a lot of time. So like I think with this method, um, if you get down to even like um, like 1.2 times efficiency, then you can see globals that reach as low as like like 2.6, 2.7 or something. So I think this method has a lot of potential. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and please let me know if you guys ha like have any questions or um, concerns. I will be, um, I will have all the reconstructions of the the solves done in the description, so you can follow along. And yeah.